All right, so happy full moon, everyone. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Mike. Hi, Liz. Hi. Nice to see you. Hi, guys. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Nice to see you again. Hi, Sarah. Nice to have you with us again. Oh, hi. Okay. I think we're. I think we're all in now. All right. So today is the full moon. Um, I'm finding it quite interesting that we are are landing. Um, the webinars seem to be landing on these these significant. Um, significant times of, of the month and the year. Um, we've had a webinar on the equinox and now we've got a webinar on the full moon. Um, and it's certainly been an interesting week um, as the energies of this full moon have been building and building and building. Um, some of it's been quite challenging to manage and it certainly feels like we've been riding these roller coaster waves of energy and some of it's been ups and some of it have been significant downs and hopefully that will start to um, start to lessen as we move through this week and the energies we start to integrate and, and process those energies um, but from checking in today to see you know what, where we're at and and, and what we are um, in for this week I was shown that currently we are at a very powerful point where there are releases happening on quite a few levels. Um, and with that release comes some significant realizations about how our thought patterns and our unresolved emotions impact our view of ourselves and our world. And I don't think that we often think about that. We don't often think about you know, what are the thoughts and the thought patterns and programmings and conditioning that I, I just automatically go into because they're habitual. Um, but we really have this opportunity now to see those quite clearly. And then as a result of that, to also see what are the hidden emotions that we haven't processed, we haven't cleared, or we haven't released. And if we don't release them, if we don't clear them, if we don't let them go, we remain stuck in the past and we're unable to then move forward. So we've been given this time where we can actually consciously work with the energies of, of, of this particular full moon, um, as it does enable us to bring a deeper balance between our heads and our hearts. And um, it gives us the opportunity as well to access on a deeper level our soul and therefore have greater access to our intuition. Um, but also one of the things that's been interesting that I've noticed this week is, is for myself and for, for many others that I've been speaking with, um, there's an awareness that is arising around the fears that almost sabotage our intuition or, or take that intuition hostage. And a lot of that stuff is going to be coming up this week and giving us the opportunity to look at what are the fears that lurk in the subconscious mind that need to be cleared and need to be addressed. Um, most fears are make no rational sense, really. Um, and they come from a time in our lives that isn't relevant to the time that we're living in right now. So it is going to be important to make a note of the fears that, that, that come up. Observe your anxiety, observe the places in yourself where you feel uncertain or you feel um, unstable even, uh, because those are the, the areas that are, that are going to be revealing the fears. So if we look at, at, currently we are manifesting through us a new reality. So it's not something that we're stepping into. We've spoken about this before. It's not something that we're stepping into. It's something that we are manifesting from within ourselves. And we're not going to be allowed to manifest anything that comes from a fear-based space. So we, we, we really need to look at these fears. What are they and, and where do they come from? And if we can name them and if we can look at where they come from and where they come from can be our families, it can be our cultures, it can be at the societies we've grown up and it can be religious fears or religious beliefs that we brought into uh, as children. So it is going to be an interesting week that, where we can look at these things and start to get 
I suppose, a sense of, um, I don't want to use the word control because that's not really the right word, but I suppose it's a, we can start to manage ourselves through these fears and allow them to be released and clear so that they don't impact us and they don't sabotage the intuition that we are desperately needing at this moment to be able to manifest what it is that we're needing to manifest. Um, I mean, the other thing that, that came up in, in, in looking at things today is that this really is like a tower moment. For any of you that, that, that know the tarot, that tower card, it really feels like we're at that point where everything that is no longer, that no longer serves us is being stripped away. And as a result of that, the, any illusions that we have lived within are being seen and being dismantled as a result of that. So it can feel like the, at times that the rug is literally being pulled out from underneath you. Um, and as dramatic as that may seem, underneath that rug, there is an incredibly stable foundation. And it is a foundation that your soul has been preparing for lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. We have worked on a soul level, we have worked for eons to get to this point. Um, so it is important to recognize that it's not that the rug is being pulled out from under, underneath us and that there's nothing underneath that rug. There is this really powerful and solid foundation that exists within our souls. So as we bring balance to our heads and our heart, and as we release all of the things that are sabotaging us, whether those are emotions or thought patterns or beliefs or fears, as we start to clear that, we start to sense and feel that foundation which will enable us to then actually move forward with a lot more confidence in what we are choosing and the directions that we're moving in. And I think confidence is something that with everything that has happened in the last year, confidence is something that we've really struggled with because we don't actually know where we are going. We don't actually know what's going to happen to the world tomorrow. And as a result of that, there's a lot of uncertainty. And for those of us that are control freaks, and don't really um, know how to manage without, without having a very clear and direct path ahead of us, it's incredibly difficult. And at the same time, it can be so exhausting because we're wading through the past. We're wading through all of this old stuff that can be draining and exhausting. And at times it may feel well feel like you've just had enough and can't do it. And the amount of times in the week that I say, I can't, you know, I can't do a single more second of this and flop on my bed and surrender to hopefully getting some sleep and escaping it all. Not that it often works, but I do try. Um, the one of the things when I, when I was asking for kind of real guidance as to how do we manage this time? And where can we focus our attention? Where can we focus our awareness? And it was on how do we better support ourselves as we move through these transitional times? Support is key. Um, you know, if, you, if you're feeling like you, you don't have the strength to support yourself, you do need to reach out to others who can support you. And that may not sadly may not be family and friends because they're all going through their own things so find a professional that you can you, you can go to and speak to and help to to clear what is what is coming up um, you know often when we speak to an impartial person or someone who doesn't know us very well the insights and the and the guidance that we can gain from them can better serve us as we go through these times we also need to look at what are the practices that we need to employ that support us as we move through these processes as well. And we spoke about this last week about the need for real tangible practices that we can engage in on a day to day basis and those don't need to be things that are, are you will find difficult and challenging to do I mean I'm not saying embarking on some kind of challenge at this point is is important because I don't think it is I think we're being challenged enough. So it's about finding the simple things that support you. Um, things like just going for a walk and, you know, I, I don't know about any of you, but I haven't had the energy to do much exercise this past week. So, you know, just being able to sit outside and in, you know, connect to nature in that way helps me to recharge on some level. Um, so it is about finding the simple things that you can do for yourself. It doesn't necessarily need to be big things. Um, and again, meditation is 
you know, it's a, it's a wonderful tool to be able to quieten our mind and to find some form of stillness within. So it is important to do that. Um, and there are many, many, many types of meditation. Find the ones that are working for you at this time. I certainly can't go into a space currently where I can meditate on my own. I'm, I'm needing the guided meditations to guide me into that space. Um, rather than attempting to to sit in in stillness um, and and quiet, um, my mind gets way too busy and I drift into things that I don't. I'm trying to get away from. So it is important to really find the things that are going to be able to support you. And the space that we, you know, as we move through this week, there is going to be a lightening of the energies as the full moon energies start to wane. We're going to feel a lightness and we're going to feel, feel a, a deeper connection to ourselves. One of the things that is also important as we feel this connection is grounding. It is going to be really, really key this week. Make sure that you are grounding on a daily basis um, because as the energies lighten, there is the sense of almost lifting off the ground and floating and that floating space is not going to be useful at the moment we need to be fully present um, in each moment we need to be fully present to ourselves and we need to be fully present to our lives um, the other the other thing is rest so grounding and rest those are two key things that we need to focus on this week um, and rest doesn't necessarily mean sleep it just means taking time out where you are able to to disengage your mind from the things that you think you need to be doing or the focus on, on work or family or whatever it is, but just taking a five minutes even just to be able to take that rest away from everything and everyone. Um, that's the kind of rest that is, that is being indicated. Um, because that resting is also what enables us to process and integrate. If we don't take time to rest, we're not going to be able to integrate. Um, I also have noticed this this past week a lot of discomfort, physical discomfort, and I've spoken to few, a few people who have also been struggling with that. If you are feeling the physical discomfort of these 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 energies and the inter, and the integration of them, give yourself um, time if you can to have a bath uh, with Epsom salts. Um, the magnesium that comes out of the Epsom salts is what our body is needing. If you're able to take magnesium supplements, take them. It's really, really key to being able to manage the energies. One of the other things that I've discovered that is really being helpful if you're struggling from um, with any muscle spasms, which is also a common um, challenge when processing all of this, this energy, is potassium. And... Um, I managed to actually just get a, a, a pure potassium tablet um, and it, it has done wonders. Take it at night, take your magnesium at night and it'll help you sleep and it'll help your body actually relax and your muscles actually relax. Um, so these are things that you can use to support yourself through this time. Um, Anyone got any questions or anything they'd like to share around what, I, what I've just spoken about? Can I jump straight in? Um, I don't usually get messages and it, it, it amuses me when, or doesn't amuse me, but I'm always impressed when people say, I got a message today. And I actually got one this morning, which is very exciting. Um, and having finally given in and not tried to force the work thing we spoke about this last week where I just couldn't function and I just gave up and said I'm just going to go with the flow do nothing let it all happen there must be a reason um, but actually having finally given into it I got a message this morning actually telling me to start making some conscious choices to actually stop um, constantly just not being in control or not not being in control it was like make some conscious choices get control of my life back a little bit because it was almost like I'm now in a balanced enough state to actually make those choices rather than just constantly drifting and then you lose your power completely so even though you've kind of tell us to go with the flow and do all of that which I've done and, and it's almost like because I've surrendered to that suddenly my body's saying okay 
now you've got the, the hang of it, actually start making some conscious choices that you can be sure about. Well, I mean, you're not sure of anything, but at least you know it's going to get you in a better place than you are now, then, then start making some of those decisions. So that's losing some of the fear, I think, as well, of saying, I've got to be responsible for that choice. And as Nancy always tells us, there's no wrong or right choice. You just have to live with the consequences. So it's, it's, it's suddenly being a little bit braver than I've been, which is quite um, unique for me about being responsible anyway for my choices. That's fantastic. Well done, Fiona. I like that. I like that, uh, that message. It's definitely, um, I, I, you're definitely in a far more balanced state than, than I've um, seen you for, for a while. So it's good. Well done. Um, hey, can I ask you to elaborate a bit on, on what you said earlier when you first started and you were saying that we will not be allowed yes. to create from a space of fear. Um, how does that you are not allowed to actually show itself? Is that just? I think, I, I think it's where we'll become, we'll feel incredibly uh, blocked or stuck. There'll be things that we are wanting to, to, to implement that just, you know, it's, it's almost like we hit a wall or the doors just don't seem to open. Um, the one thing that I was shown many, many years ago in, in a vision was that we are moving through this incredible time of, of clearing and healing and releasing and waking, awakening and all of that. But um, what I was shown is that we would get to a point where we would need to step into some kind of new reality. And at the time, I was shown a vision of a doorway and we were all moving towards this doorway. And some people were approaching the doorway with, with bags um, and suitcases. And once they reached the doorway, they were told, you cannot go until you leave. you've got to leave that behind. You can't take that with you. And I was told that it was all of this old stuff that, that we've carried sometimes for lifetimes, but mostly that comes from this lifetime that needs to be let go of and released because it will impact the creation of the new reality in a negative way. So we, the, the new reality we're building cannot be formed from a space of fear. It just, it just can't. The, 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 the vibrationary space of that reality will not hold fear. So therefore it cannot be brought into that space. So if there are emotions and thoughts and programmings and conditionings that we, that are fear-based, which are the ones that we're clearing currently, those are the things that we will not be able to take with us as we move forward. So it's, it, I think, does that make, does that answer your question, Megan? Well, you, you were saying that anything we create from a fear base, um, in other words, to protect ourselves, to yeah. um, put something in place now, you, you're actually saying that it's going to be either extremely difficult or absolutely painful because that, that's how to block you yes. from trying to protect yourself from whatever it is you're fearing. I don't know, is that? Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll almost become impossible for you to do what it is that you want to do and life will just become too difficult and you will feel like you're being held back. You will feel like you can't move forward, that you can't make decisions, that the clarity that you need around making choices and decisions is just not there. Um, and look, I, you know, we're at a particular time now where um, we have this opportunity to clear all of this old stuff, but there are many opportunities. I mean, this isn't the final one, sadly. <laughs> I think we've got a few, you, you know, this process of transition from one reality into the next is not gonna happen overnight or in the blink of an eye. Um, and I think I joked, at some point last night about you know I, I love change and I embrace change but the process of change I don't really like because I'd like to just go from here to there um, but we you know we, we can't sadly do that we have to go through this process of change and it's going to take time um, and for some people it's going to take years hopefully not for us <laughs> hi can I jump in um, it's lovely to be back you all and um 
I think for me, the last few weeks have been really interesting. So since starting, you know, joining you all, first of all, you gave me some really, all gave me some really good tips about, um, you know, working within my family and letting go and, you know, letting go of some of the um, old, maybe some of, sort of the old patterns and resistance. And I really worked at that and that has been loosening and it's completely changed things, which has made things a lot calmer um, with my dad, which has been amazing. So thank you for that. Um, I also, so then I went into this period of sort of deep trust really. So as you were sort of saying, Kate, then about if we let fear get in the way, then it can really stop us. Or if we let these old patterns get in the way. And I had a few weeks where I was really in my flow and I was really feeling like, it, it was like I was in a dance. I don't think I said this to you all the other week, but you know, like if you're doing like a Kaylee or something, you're moving and you're just sort of flowing like that, or you're sort of past, you know, interlocking, like weaving like that, or like a river. It felt like that, like everything I was doing just felt like it was sort of going in this lovely way. And I thought, oh, this is what sort of trusting and letting go is all about. And then, I mean, I wasn't here last weekend or the weekend before, and I found Kate's, what you were talking about last week saying, oh my goodness, that week before was pretty full on. And that was a week where I completely went back into my old, pattern like a couple of things just set me off kilter and I went back into the old patterns of trying to sort of control things you know it was I'm normally really good with dates and things but over the last few weeks dates seem to have gone a bit funny in my head and I thought I had something on a Friday where it was actually on a Wednesday and it completely threw me and I then went into a completely old pattern which was to then I'd planned out how I was going to spend my time in the run up to this piece of work that I had to do, but it completely threw me and I ended up doing completely too much, going completely over the top, taking all my energy, which I didn't have there to use. And then it had such a knock on effect and it made me then just completely lose my flow. So for about 10 days, I went into this old feeling of almost being sort of trapped and then it was in your meditation Kate uh, yeah that um I listened to earlier in the week when I just realized I haven't been in this trusting space I haven't been in my flow and going back to source and I just thought you've just got to trust and let go because actually when you do all these really good things happen mm -hmm. and it feels a much more healing space to be in um so yeah I just wanted to share that with you really and hoping that I can stay in this way and I'm trying to work out trying to catch myself as well and trying to observe when these things are actually happening you know what is it what is the recipe that a is a good recipe for me but b what is the recipe that sets me off kilter um yeah so there you go I wanted to share that <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. That, that's well done for being able to get back into it. And I think, you know, sometimes we, we we kind of go off kilter because there's something that we need to be seeing, there's something that we need to be releasing or clearing. So we get back into that old pattern to be able to do that. And I, I, th I think it is also important to, to, to recognize that it's so much easier once you fall out of balance to recognize it and to be able to bring yourself back into that balance. So once you fall out of the flow to bring yourself back into the flow. And maybe the question that, that you can ask is in that time when you feel out of it, what is it that I'm not trusting in myself? You know, why have I lost faith or trust in myself to be able to move with the flow? Because if we're trying to control things, it's because we, we're not trusting. Um, you know, we're not, we are essentially are not trusting ourselves. Thank you, Kate. That, yeah, that's a really good tip. I will put that one down and, and, and notice and try and work out what that is. So thank you. Uh, Lynn's just messaged and said, I feel that I'm seeing the limits of my old reality that seem to be falling away, almost as though the outside of myself is now false or an illusion. Yeah. 
I've been noticing that too. It's kind of like stepping out of yourself and observing yourself from a different perspective. And then Susan's written, I'm struggling at the moment with wanting to be grateful for things in my life, yet at the same time being dissatisfied with certain aspects. How do you accept the bad bits, but without being critical? This has all come about as a result of me deciding to make better choices for myself going forward and wanting to upgrade some areas of my life. That's a gr great question. Um, and actually, I was having a conversation with someone yesterday about something similar, where I think in, in relation to that, gratitude can be difficult. Um, but what perhaps you can start to look at is all the things that we have done, all the programming that we've taken on, all the patterns that we've taken on, all the, the, the way we have lived our lives until, until now has served us. In some way, it has served us. And so if you can start to look at those parts and say, well, they have served me, and obviously they are still serving me, or otherwise they would no longer be relevant. And they would be things that I would be moving away from or moving out of my life. So rather than looking for the gratitude, rather start to see or, or trying to feel the gratitude, rather start to see if, how do these things serve me and, and how are they still serving me because they are still present. Does that answer the question a, a bit? Ed, can I pop in there with just a comment? And you must also be aware that when you are, are, are making changes in your life, um, people around you, generally speaking, they don't want you to change. So that they'll be trying to spread you and um, just make it difficult for you. But that's on them. That's on, not on you with the choices you're making. Um, don't know if that helps, Susan. Um, Susan, also, I just started reading a book that I can highly recommend. I mean, I've not read much, but has anybody read this before? The Enneagram of Belonging. Mm -hmm. um, because this is talking about basically that we all have sort of like, um, well, first chapter is show me, my dra show me a dragon, which is finding the courage to face our shadow. And it's talking about basically loving the parts of us that, you know, maybe we don't love so much or might be ashamed of. So that might sort of, be something that you might want to think about reading possibly that might help um it's written in a really nice way and it's got a forward by Brené Brown um, um and it's by I can put it in the chat if you want me to um, and then it's yeah and then it's there And Lorenz also written, when we get triggered by something or someone or an event, it gives us the opportunity to step back and recognize where we are blocked and the path forward. Yeah, definitely does. And I think also there's a time and a, and a place for, for, for change. You know, it could be that there's some areas in your life that are not ready for the transformation or the change yet. Um, so it, it may be a time of having to just wait until that aspect or that area is highlighted in a, in a more, um, or highlighted so that it becomes clearer, the changes that maybe perhaps you need to make. And some of the, the um, Some of the choices that we have to make, be ma have to make, can't be made right now. We're having to wait for other parts of the puzzle to to become apparent before we can actually make those changes. You know, we may think from this perspective, well, this is how I need to be. This is who I need to be. This is the life that I need to start living, and yet we can't implement them because you know the world's in lockdown and. We've got a global pandemic and that's putting a spanner in the works. Um, you know, other people may not be ready for us to step forward and into that new space. So sometimes it also is just a timing. Yes, I, I can definitely speak to that. 
<laughs> and it's <laughs> it, um, these things that I think that I'm uh, that I'm seeing, you know, that that moment of stepping outside of myself and recognizing that there's a change that needs to happen, um, but then recognizing that um, there are additional things to work through to be prepared to do that letting go can feel frustrating. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I've been working with is um, recognizing when I have something that I need to let go of um, and then recognizing uh, how I have needed that thing in the past, how it served me really well in the past um, and processing how it served me so well. Um, you know, it's almost like it's it's this warm, fuzzy best friend to, um, I'm trying to think of an example right now. Um, 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 I can't come up with one except for a story about my nephew. When he was three, had a horrible, horrible scrape knee, you know, just one of those really bad, uh, scrape knees, you know, band, big band-aids and whatnot. And um, one day, uh, my mother was taking care of him. And she said, oh, Nick, look, your knee. It's so much better. And he burst into tears. And she couldn't figure out why. And when he finally stopped sobbing, he was able to say, but Grandma, I needed that owie. <laughs> and it was because he wanted the band-aids, but you know, <laughs> this is how it feels for me right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm crying because I needed the owie and I'm kind of frustrated with myself about it, but eh. I love that story. <laughs> I think it's also, <sighs> I, you know, I, I, I've also worked with many people who have had trauma in their life um, that they hold on to because it has helped to define them. So they don't want to let go of it. So they relive over and over and over again this trauma because it is what helps them to feel seen in the world or to be... Um, or to be something, you know, they, they, they've used it to define themselves and to define their space in the world. And so it can be incredibly difficult to, to let go of that stuff. Um, and I think that, you know, part of the letting go is needing to, to uncover who are we? Who are we really? Who are we at our core? We put on all these things, these roles and, and these wounds and these traumas and we've claimed them and we've said okay well this patchwork of all of that is is who I am but actually it's it's not you know it's it's the experiences that we've had in life and when we let go of our attachment and uh, to those experiences and just see them as a story um but not something that we need to define ourselves by then then we're able to free ourselves and to become more of who we are at our core rather than thinking we need to be something else or something different. Um, Kira's written also there's something about the idea of what's bad and what's good that puts what we are experiencing into a place of discomfort. In my world anyway I've recognized this as, this as a program of judgment self-judgment that I'm getting better at releasing, much easier to come at discomfort from a neutral place. Exactly. Um, and I think at this time, we can step more and more into that neutral space. That neutral space is the, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, the space of the observer. And we're able to, when we step into that space of being able to observe the patterns or the programs or the judgments or the criticisms, whether they are of ourselves or, other, or others, we can actually do something about them. And it can be as simple as being able to say, I don't want to think that anymore. I'm not going to think that way anymore. And making that decision in the moment. Um, you know, we're so conditioned, we have been so conditioned by the world to view things in, in the light of good 
or, or the shadow of bad, um, when in fact, it is just experience. And rather than judging those experiences and judging ourselves for, for having those experiences, we can just allow them to be that, or even attaching to them. Hey, I'm just sorry to ask, what was the, um, there was one of the sessions that we did as a collective, so I don't know whether it was clearing things from your soul past, mm -hmm. where what Susan's saying, or what other people are saying about this self-judgment, because I know about it very well. Um, it's one of those things where you take yourself back to the moment of, of being a small child or whenever it was, and you kind of forgive yourself or you give yourself a hug. Mm. And it was actually just very effective because rather than judging your standards of how you behaved then, as you would now, when you think, oh my God, how could I be like that? How could I be so terrible? And that like, makes me so bad. And then you beat yourself up even more. It's trying to go back to when you did it and understand why and then forgive yourself for it because of the circumstances that you can then help to release it because it's no longer judging yourself now. It's in the past. It was something then that was appropriate, but you've moved on and, and overall become a better person, but you still can't let it go. So you have to go back and sort of forgive yourself. But, but I don't know if there's a meditation or whether that was just all part of the soul clearance. Well, I, th I think that it, I can't, I can't remember exactly offhand when that what that what that came from but i think it's also rec just recognizing that at the time when we have made decisions or embarked on particular paths we've done that with the knowledge and the insight and the wisdom that we have at that particular time hindsight is wonderful in hindsight we can all look back at our lives and say well if i hadn't done that and i hadn't done that the consequences wouldn't have been x y and z but the point is, is that at that time of making that choice, that was the only thing that you knew how to do or what to do. So we can't judge ourselves on the past. We've got to look at it from the perspective of, of who I was in that time. If I look back at my, at my life, there have been too many times to mention where if I view the, the, the situations from, from this place, they were horrendous choices. And I, you know, even if I look back, I even knew they were bad choices, bad choices that I was making, but I still did them anyway, because, and an example of this would be my marriage. I knew the night before I got married, I knew I told my father, don't worry, if it doesn't work, I'm going to get divorced. Who says that on the night of their marriage or of their wedding? <laughs> I see there are a few hands up other people have I think I said mine about a week before the wedding actually so <laughs> yeah but but we still went ahead and did it we still went ahead but and I remember at the time observing myself saying these things to my father and thinking what are you doing and thinking I have to do this and I did have to do it because it was a soul it was part of my soul purpose it was part of my soul's journey it was part of what I had to do in this lifetime so, you know, that is also, we make choices and decisions guided by that impulse that comes from our soul, but we don't actually, you know, at the time may not recognize it as being that impulse. Hey, Kate. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. When I decided to get married, my best friend, I was living out in San Francisco, it was the 70s. <clears throat> um, and my best friend and I, he and I went to Napa Valley and we, okay, we were tripping on acid, fine. But at the time I could see as clearly as can be. And I said, and my marriage will probably only last five years, but I think it's something I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And five years later to the day, I moved in on July 1st and five years later on July 1st, I left. And I still, I mean, you know, people are like, oh, that's, you made the decision dripping on acid. I'm like, but it was the clearest decision. I look back and go, oh, I completely saw the course of that, you know, and I went ahead and did it anyway. Um, so whatever. But I was thinking about what Fiona said and, and what you've been talking about that I look back at, I spent so much time in my life looking backwards and I almost never do it anymore. But when I do, I really do try to look at it the way you just said, because I used to just beat the 
daylights out of myself over things I did in the past. And the truth is, it's exactly what you guys said. I did the best I could with the tools I had in the toolbox at the time, which sometimes was pretty damn pathetic. But I am who I am here today because of lots of those stupid mistakes and the, you know, uh, pot I smoked that led me of and drinks I drank that eventually led me into recovery like 33 years ago. You know, I look at all of those things from a different perspective and it sounds kind of airy fairy to say it, but, but it's so true. It is how we become a product of all of those decisions, the bad ones and the good ones. And when you can look at it that way, again, then there aren't bad decisions. They're just decisions that led us to really uncomfortable consequences or whatever. And when you can look at it that way, and sometimes I look back and I go, you know, like things that literally a relationship that had me curled up in a ball on the floor, literally curled up in a ball on the floor. And I just, and I laughed to myself now because me still a friend and I kind of go, well, I'm really glad that didn't work out the way that I wanted that had me laying on the floor crying because he's much better off where he is now and with who he is with now and God bless her, you know. So if you can look at life a little bit that way when you're so busy beating yourself up and I think especially as sensitive people, which if you're sitting on this call, you probably are, we're all prone to make those, you know, we're sensitive and we go back and we judge ourselves from this point of view. And, and you're never going to look, you know, if we all were already here, then what's the journey? I don't know if that makes sense, but whatever. Well, I, I, I agree, Nancy, and I also think that, you know, you look back and you think, well, well, what are the things that I have learned? I mean, there are lessons in all these experiences. There's opportunities for healing and growth that we may never have had if we hadn't chosen those paths or, or made those decisions. Um, you know, they can be a simple, I mean, I, I wouldn't have had my ch the, the children that I have if I hadn't gotten married at the time that I got married to the person that I got married to. Um, and I don't want my life, my life, I probably wouldn't be alive today without them. And that's honest, you know, that's the truth. I think I'm grateful for things because it makes me who I am now. And even though they may have been very difficult, and like you, I had great mother challenges, but it's been one of the biggest journeys of my life to make the decision that I wanted to live with me. And mm. it means I know, and I can tell anyone I know, you can overcome anything. Mm. And mm. if I didn't have all those experiences, I wouldn't have got all these tools and I wouldn't be who I am now. And I like me, I, I, I'm okay with all of that. Even though there may have been times I wasn't. Um, my central theme is gratitude. Mm. Not necessarily when I was in them, but now, yes. Mm. I agree. I I agree. I think if I'm frozen. Can... <laughs> frozen. I, I agree with you. I think that it's it's, <laughs> yeah. it's incredibly important to be able to look back at the things that we've been through and to be able to see yeah. that how they have helped us to become who we are. Um, because without them, no, I, I, you know, we'd be different people, living different lives. I've got a question for everyone. I'm from Canada. I love the fact that we're on just about every continent, it sounds like. And this is the first time I've been part of this call. But my question has to do with um, in these current energies of release, are, is anyone else finding that there, it's easy to differentiate between what is my energy or what is our energy and what is someone else's? Because as sensitive people, Nancy brought this up. Um, I, I think we, I know for myself anyway, that I've been a carrier of a lot of other people's 
unresolved things. And now it's just easier to see, oh, that's not mine. That actually love you very much, but you, here you go. You can have it back, right? And it's making it a lot easier for me. Is anyone else feeling that? Yep. There are lots, lots of nodding heads. Everyone's nodding. <laughs> so, yeah. I think also it's so much easier to be able to make it to, to create those energetic boundaries at the moment. I don't know if anyone else is finding that. Because there's so much more clarity around what is mine and what is someone else's, we can create those boundaries of saying, well, this is yours, you can have it back, I'm not taking it. And, you know, automatically there is a boundary. And like this faith has written, we are allowed to whine from time to time. Oh, most definitely. And don't worry, I do a lot. And Lorraine's written, just hold compassion for ourselves with whatever we are dealing with and trying to shift. Um, Fiorenz has written in response to Elise, I find the full moon energy always causes absolute havoc with my emotions and my responses. Mm. I agree. For many of us, it does that. And it seems to get, I am, maybe we just become more conscious of the impact of the energies. I was going to say, it seems like it's getting more intense, but maybe we're just more conscious. And so therefore feel them more than we would normally. Um, Natasha has written and often near miss or trauma can also build internal resilience going forward. Yeah, that is important. I was complaining the other day about uh, the impact of the full moon and <laughs> my partner said in his uh, wonderful humorous way, oh sweetheart, it's because you're drinking so much water. <laughs> trying to be, be healthy and all that and so the the uh, gravitational pull is getting you <laughs> well it might be i was gonna add you know i think for for me what i've been finding the more i keep myself out of fear um and you know it's you don't, I haven't ever really thought of myself as a fearful person, but once you start really digging into all the things you're trying to shift, you realize <clears throat> that a lot of our, you know, reactions have a fear to them. So I know the more that I st stay out of that, you know, you get triggered and you get back into it for a moment, but the more you stay out of it and then just forgive yourself for the fact that, you know, that compassion, um, then that's, you know, when you're able to stay really calm and neutral I think when other people are triggered and I just had before I got on the call I had a email from a client <clears throat> that was reacting emotionally to something and I don't generally engage in emails on the weekends but you know it I saw the gratitude and be able to just stop and say you know this is an emotional week so that I'm going to see a lot of this and it's okay I'll just you know we'll talk through it and it'll be okay um, so at least, you know, being able to get yourself back into that place, I think Kate, you're using the word balance, that place of balance. I know that that helps me because no matter how long we've been working at this, <laughs> unfortunately, I know I keep getting to new layers of things that I have to, um, have to, to clear that are, you know, affecting me in order to keep shifting. I know I mentioned I, last week, my knee had started bothering me. I've had knee problems for years and it's been like what is going on with this so it's getting better but I think a lot of it was just not um, recognizing that uh, you know there was something I wasn't letting flow when you step back and say wow but I'm letting things flow I'm I'm making decisions and um, you know but there was one particular thing I wasn't and it made me look at it and I think the faster we can just hold compassion for ourselves and say hey I um, just needed to see it. So now we're going to work on it. And then you just move through it faster, I think. And you're able to keep calm and 
hold your balance as other people are triggering around you. Because I, I don't know about everyone else, but you know, I'm running into that all over the place. That people are very emotional and very and they're and what's underneath that I think is fear. They don't understand what's happening. We've got the benefit here of having such a broader perspective. And I'm always so grateful to have a broader perspective and try to share that. But not everyone's ready to hear it. So if somebody's not ready to hear it and they're emotional, we can stay calm if we have compassion for ourselves and for them um, and just keep ourselves out of fear. And, it would, you know, that's, you know, kind of how the last couple of weeks have been for me. And I'm sure this one's going to be a doozy. So this week's going to be a doozy. So. Well, maybe, if, you know, what, what's that saying? Um, forewarned is forearmed. Maybe it won't be. Maybe we'll sail through the week and fingers crossed. <laughs> I like that one, Kate. Yes, I think it just was such a great timing that I got that email right before we got on. And I think I was in a good space, but it's like, this has just been great because it's just that reminder that if we're in the right space, we just flow through it. Um, and then, you know, and trust that it's, it's going to work out. It'll be fine. <laughs> Just yeah. gonna, it, it's very difficult, though, sometimes. I remember, I remember when I first started trying to sort myself out a bit, you know, and everyone said, oh, just forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself up so much. And I used to just want to kill them because it was like, it's not that easy. You know, I keep saying forgive myself, but it doesn't happen. And I, I think, oh, you're all so sort of om and everything's perfect and you can do it and it's all fine. And you don't realize how stressed I am and I can't get there. And it's, it's quite interesting when I look back now, I can't remember when it shifted or when it changed. All that I know now is that I'm in a much more delicious space of where I can actually look back and do it. But I don't quite know how I got here. And it is very frustrating when you're first into it and you can't do it, that everybody just, oh, it's so easy, just forgive yourself. Like, of course you can't. Um, but it just takes time. I don't know whether it's just, it's a gradual thing. It's not like you wake up one morning and it's ping, the whole thing's changed. It's gradually chipping away until you suddenly realize that you're just exhausted trying to fight it. I don't know. Also, I, I, I think it's also, you know, two things I just want to comment on that you said. The, the first one being, um, you know, we embark on a healing journey and I think we, we, we've become a culture of instant gratification. So, you know, we go on this journey of healing and we expect that, that healing to happen instantly. You know, we over stuff and we've moved through stuff and we've cleared it and we've released it. But it doesn't actually ha happen like that. You know, we start the process. And at some point, often when we haven't even done anything, the shift happens and the healing has, has happened. And we can't actually pinpoint what it was that, that created that shift. But it's a collection of all the things that we've done, all the things that we've come to understand about ourselves, all the things that perhaps we've read, all the different um, things we've explored. You know, it's a collection of all of that has then created the healing. It's not just one single thing that does it. Um, and I think with with forgiveness as well. I mean, you, you know, I, I'm like you. It used to drive me nuts when people say, "Oh, well, you just need to love yourself." Like, that's that's wonderful. But you know, how do you love yourself when you've been taught your whole life that you are unlovable? You know, how do you you know? And it wasn't wasn't like there was a point where I loved myself and so I could go back there and remember that feeling you know you have to dig deep to find it and a bit like that, that with the forgiveness thing is is that actually what what initiates or starts to initiate that process of forgiveness and self-love is compassion for ourselves is recognizing again that you know the, the choices that we've made and the decisions that we've made we made at the time at that time when we thought that that was the only option we had. So if we can start to look back with empathy and compassion at the person that we were that made those choices, rather than beating ourselves up for being so damn stupid, you know, we made those decisions then because that's, that's all we knew how to do or what to do. Um, and have compassion for that person that we were then, rather than thinking we should have known better. How could we have known better? 
we had to go on the journey to get to this point to be able to know better. So we won't ever repeat those so-called mistakes. We will make better choices. We will make more co conscious choices. And we, will, we, we are learning to explore ourselves on a deeper level so that when we, when we make decisions and cho choices, we make them from a place of conscious awareness rather than reaction. I think, I think that's the main thing actually of, of we were talking earlier about patterns and things and recognizing them. And it's, it's half the thing is recognizing the pattern first, then you can deal with it. Whereas before it was just such a spontaneous reaction to everything. You didn't actually have time to absorb what it was. And then you have the conscious choice to respond in whatever way is more appropriate. And, and even if you can't do all the right things first, at least you're stopping and you're thinking before you speak. And, and, and that, I suppose, has been a gradual process of just thinking, you know, I'd usually do that. Hang on, why does that trigger that? I'm going to stop. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to react differently. And you often get a much better result. So it's through the experience of stopping and trying a different way. You just suddenly feel more comfortable with it. It becomes more natural. And I think that's also key is that, you know, we can think about these things and we can work through things, but we actually have to take action on them too. You know, so you actually have to take action in, in, in that moment to choose a different response or to choose a different reaction. Um, because it isn't something that happens automatically. You know, we, we, we actually have to choose in that moment to take that step forward onto a different path. Um, and it, it, it's an incredibly powerful moment when it happens because it is almost like everything slows down and everything goes into slow motion and you realize that you're at a moment where you get to make a different choice that will impact the rest of your life and yeah, yeah. I, I was going to add to um talking about the patterns fiona what's for me personally i've and we've talked about this before i've done a lot of past life work and i know kate's you've done some classes and programs for that helping that's helped me so much to see the patterns because what I've seen is that I the patterns that I've had in this life I have repeated from other traumas mm. um, and so just understanding that has helped me so much uh, to recognize them so it doesn't fix it all you're still trying to solve it all solve it but it helps me recognize it and uh, get better, you know, better and, and more, um, I guess, neutral when things happen. I understand, okay, that was the pattern, but I, I'm not going there. But it, have, having that cl those clearings on a deeper, really deep soul level have made a huge um, impact for me. So. It, it, what, was, what were the words that you used um, at the beginning of the session talking about how we, um, we come into the future um, a step, we step into the future. We step into it. We don't. Um, we're not stepping into it. We're manifesting it from within ourselves. Ah, that's what it was. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more about that? Because I think that that that's resonating with what we're saying that 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 it's um you don't just um step in and um at the at a snap of a finger find that it's all solved mm -hmm. that that it happens over time mm -hmm. right yes and i i, I think it's you remember we talked a while back about the puzzle and how we're all pieces of the puzzle and how our shape is changing so that we can fit into a new picture. Um, and I think in order for us to manifest from within us the new reality, we are having to change internally. We're having to let go internally of the programs, the patterns, the emotions, the thoughts, whatever it is that keeps us re- playing the past or and therefore reliving the past so as we make those adjustments and as we make those changes we change and become the new and as a result of that we are able to then as we step forward the new steps into being 
rather than something that is created outside of ourselves that we then step into. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, yes, um, that makes sense. And um, one of the things that a, a, a teacher of mine, I think you and I talked about this, um, said to me that also makes sense is stop telling your stories of the old patterns over and over and over and over because you're clinging to them when you do this. Um, yeah, yeah, I see, I see the saying <laughs> this, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that helps a lot, Kate, thank you. Kate? Yes. Hi. Hi, hi. Um, I don't know whether this is at all relevant because I don't often speak up, but what I found very unusual about this period of time is that for, I don't know, 32 years, I've been a globe-trotting television producer doing mad shit, and I jump in and I help everyone and I sort everything and I make everything happen. And what's so weird about having a year of lockdown when you are completely in self-isolation, all of those experiences and what you define yourself to be fall away, right? Because you're sitting at home and you only have your own company to deal with. But of all that everyone has been talking about today, one of the things has been the biggest lesson I've learned is to understand that I can't go in and fix everything. And so by realizing that sometimes it's somebody else's problem to fix, by stepping away and saying, gosh, I'm so sorry you're having a horrible time. I'll support you, love you, give you a hug, but I actually can't fix it right now because physically we've been um, isolated. In a way, it's been such an extraordinary experience for me because I'm no longer the badge of what I do as a forward thinking, people facing, fixer, make it happen kind of person. And so that lockdown in a way has given me the most extraordinary space to go over all of those experiences and figure out genuinely who I've become because of them. And that's been a bit of a treat. Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's, an, that's a beautiful way of putting it. Um, I think that, that, that the lockdowns and the isolation have really given us that opportunity. And I mean, as much as it must be incredibly frustrating for you that have been put back into lockdown right now, I can only think that it's got to serve some purpose and that we need more time perhaps to um, reflect and to make choices around what we, you know, how we want to put ourselves forward in the world again. Um, I mean, it's certainly given me an opportunity to reflect on that as, you know, stepping forward and, and, and doing these webinars every week I wasn't doing them before lockdown <laughs> so sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone as a result which is so good but it, it's also just losing all the distractions around you I mean Natasha I think I spoke about it ages ago you know when I got divorced I was a initially a hard-working full-on stepmother doing everything and then overnight I lost all of it and suddenly I was just left with me and it was like who was I at that time, I simply wasn't ready to deal with it. I just had a nosedive for six months of, of panic. And it's been quite interesting that this year, rather than just sit being so lost and in a panic of who am I really, rather than all those things around me that make me what I am and people's perception of me, um, I've been in a better space to actually make choices of saying, how can I live my life a little bit differently? So there is more of me. And as you saying about fixing everything, it's just been such a relief not to constantly be fixing things for people. You know, it hasn't given me much space to do all the other things I want to do because of lockdown, but it's just been, actually the world has survived without me. You know, I don't know whether it was a sort of arrogance on my part of thinking if I don't fix it, it's going to be a disaster. Um, and it hasn't, there's enough disaster going on. But, but interestingly, Kate, what you were saying about us going down into new lockdown, 
we're actually getting released tomorrow. We can meet six people outside. So it's one of the, the, the points of where we are allowed, allowed to be in a garden with six people. And then on the April the 12th, the pubs open, which everybody is so excited about. Um, and then from May the 17th, we, we technically are allowed to leave the country without being fined 5,000 pounds. Um, but actually, when you're talking about the new moon, it's quite interesting that this is actually a, a, a pivotal point for us tomorrow. We are actually allowed to expand, release, and, and we're being you know, let out a little bit more. So, but there's a little part of me that's thinking, I don't really want all these people around. I've got quite used to being on my own and I quite like the hermit thing. And suddenly there's gonna be all this bustle of six rowdy people in a park. And I'm like, go away, I like the quiet. Um, I've got to get over that. But, but it is, it's funny how having had the quiet year, I'm a little bit nervous going back of, I've got to use the new tools of the new me in a world that's old and, and as it was and react differently. And of course, I haven't done that yet. So I suppose there's a little bit of anticipation and, and fear of, will I slip back into the old ways? Because it's very easy to move into new ways while you're in a new world and in this bubble, but put the old world back a little bit of it. Um, it's can you redirect yourself in the, in the sort of the old patterns of other people, I suppose. Yeah, I, I think maybe for myself, I'm, I'm certainly, <laughs> making notes of you know how to the new things that I'm implementing for myself moving forward and as a reminder of these are the, you know this is this must be my focus don't get sidetracked again by you know the external um because yeah I mean you might as well not even you wouldn't think that there was anything going on except for the fact that people are wearing masks everything's open here and as a result of that, um, you can get sucked back in. And then I noticed particularly this week because the universities went back and the traffic was worse. And I mean, I've been muttering quite a lot about the traffic and how I wish we, we were back in lockdown, much to everyone's horror. Um, but it, you know, it, you suddenly get stuck. I mean, I got stuck in traffic for 40 minutes. I'm like, I haven't been in traffic for a year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> forget. Um, and then Mike, Mike had a good point here. He says, lockdown has stripped our outside ident identity. Uh, I completely agree with that. Um, it's giving us the opportunity to play with that as well. Kira's written, I like that we have more personal space now, two meters in Canada, which is likely to remain. Didn't know. I was so in appreciative, appreciative, so appreciate in appreciation of that until COVID. I also like that. You can glare at someone in the shopping queue behind you if they're a bit close, and you know no one gets offended. <laughs> My personal space. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share or any questions they'd like to ask? I just wanted to thank you for yesterday, Kate. We had, that was such a nice time, the question and answer time. And I hung up feeling better than I felt in a while um, myself. So um, thank you for that. And, and Fiona, I too have realized that I kind of love my inner hermit. And so people are talking, you know, my sisters are like, well, you can come do this, you can. And I'm like, mm, you know, and they're talking about who they're gonna bring back to the college to work live now and, you know, in the near future, not right now. And I'm like, ooh, kind of like my kitchen table, you know? And so uh, it, it is funny, the reaction in the beginning, you can't imagine that a year from now, you'd still be doing the same thing and then a year later you go, well, I'm not so sure I want to return to some of those things. And Kate, I sat in a traffic jam, Boston's notorious for traffic. And I'm like annoyed. Whereas I used to just accept it as part of life. Now I'm like, these people are really annoying. What are they all doing out here? <laughs> yeah, why aren't they sitting at home? <laughs> they need to go back. <laughs> it's exactly the same. 
it also messed up my time because I, you know, I expected to be somewhere because I'm so used to there not being any traffic and, and I was late. Okay. Yeah. Natasha's just written re entry will be challenging. Yeah, it is challenging, trust me. Although we're being told that we may, may go into lockdown over Easter, um, which I'm quite happy about. I'm not allowed to say that in front of my children. Okay, so maybe we can move into a space and, and, and do some meditating unless anyone's got anything else they'd like to share. Okay. All right, so thanks, Susan. We'll see you hopefully soon. Susan's leaving us. Um, okay, so allow yourself to just settle into a comfortable spot, comfortable space. And just closing your eyes, draw your awareness into your body. Becoming aware of your breath and just allow yourself to settle into this moment and into the space. allow your body to begin to relax. Letting go of thoughts and worries and concerns. And feeling yourself settle into a deeper space. Allow yourself to let go of any discomfort or pain that you're feeling at the moment. Allowing your body to relax. And move your awareness to your crown, the top of your head. Just become aware of the energies as they move into your body and being. Become conscious of the flow of the energies as they move in through your crown. Moving down your body to exit out of your feet and into the earth. Become aware of the flow. And just allow yourself to feel in your body if there are any blockages 
any area where the flow is not able to move. And just surround that, that space with those blocks, with light. And allow the light to dissolve them, to release them. Focusing on the energy coming in, observing it as it flows through your body and being, and exit out and out of your feet and into the earth. As the energy moves out of your feet, become aware of your feet and the connection that you have to the earth through your feet. Recognize that this connection enables you to be grounded be present and to be human. Now staying connected, <clears throat> connected to the earth. Allow yourself and your awareness to expand beyond the space. Feel yourself moving. and outwards and into the universe. And as you look down, you can see the planet Earth before you. And as you look 
around, you can see each one of us joining you and encircling the earth. We're now focusing on the source of all life, all love, source of all creation. Allow yourself to draw that energy to you. Feel that energy begin to move through the crown of your head. to fill your body and being with light and with love. Feel this light and love moving into the, all the areas, all the spaces in your body and in your being that are in need of healing. that are in need of support and that are in need of love. Feel yourself relaxing into this energy and into this support. Feel your heart opening and expanding. And now take a moment to send light and love to the earth. Allow this energy to flow through your heart. And beam it towards the planet. Allow this energy to merge with each one of us as we encircle the planet. Feel the light and the love moving into the places and the spaces and the people that are most in need of it now. Feel it moving into the spaces and the places where fear is dominant.
can just observe how this energy transforms and transmutes fear and negativity. And now direct this energy into the waters of the earth, to the oceans and the rivers and the lakes and the streams. Watch how this energy transforms and transmutes poisons and the toxins that exist within the waters. Watch how the waters begin to dance, sparkle with light and life and love. And now direct this energy into the land, into the earth itself. Observe as it moves into the soil and then into the plants and the trees. Feeding nature light, with love, and with life.
Now gently drawing your awareness back into the space that we've created around the earth. And allow the energies to settle within your body and being. And gently allow yourself to return to your physical form. A few deep breaths. And move your fingers and your toes and you can open your eyes when you're ready. Sure, thank you everyone. Oh, that felt um, quite powerful. I think it's going to be an interesting week. <laughs> Let's see. Um, one of the things that came up while I, while I was um, sending energy at the beginning, sending energy just to the planet. Um, were those mass shootings that have been happening in the States um, and how that fear needs to be transmuted. Um, so let's hope we've helped to soften some of that for everyone and um, alleviate some of the pain that must be feeling. You should be able to go to the grocery store at 2.30 in the afternoon and not wonder if you'll come back out. Exactly. The global coherence moment for the full moon is in 10 hours time. So that's at 5 a.m. in the morning for us. So we can all connect in with that possibly around whatever time works for us across the planet again. Mm. Thanks, for, thanks for that, Liz. That's a good idea. Mm. We may just be able to wake up and do that. Yeah, and just go back into where we've just been and join that to everybody else tomorrow morning. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, again, it's been another special time with all of you, and I look forward to seeing you all next week, if not before. Have a wonderful week, everyone. See you all soon. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Cheers, bye.